I'm going to give you simple techniques of what you can do to become a better human being this year. I told you, come tonight, you learn how to shine. Elul, the four D's of lasting change. Number one, first D, don't do it alone. One of the principles of a person who goes to Alcoholics Anonymous or Gambling Anonymous is what's called the 12-step program. And guess what? In order for you to get out of gambling or out of alcohol overuse, they make you sit in a room with other people because they know you can't pull yourself out of the hole in the ground. Your friends have to be there. I handle a lot of shidduchim with people that are former alcoholics. I know all about it. They tell me, oh, I can't come and meet with you because I have a meeting on Monday with Alcoholics Anonymous. I have a 12-step program made of Shabbat or of Shabbos. I know what's going on here. But here's the lesson. Don't do it alone. Involve a friend. You want to learn a little bit more Torah but you don't trust yourself? Get a chavrusa. Have someone learn with you. You can do it on Zoom, you can do it on the phone, you can do it in a base medrash. Get someone to motivate you, get someone to encourage you. Too many people make big resolutions out of Rosh Hashanah and never follow through because they don't have a support system. You need a support system. And that support system is your brother, your cousin, your best friend, your business acquaintance, your partner, but someone to hold you to the standard, someone to hold your feet to the fire. And when you feel like you want to give up, you start learning and you're psyched up in October and now it's December and the weather's cold, you want to sleep a little bit more, January, snow, it's going to be your chavrusa or your friend that's going to keep you on task. So number one, don't do it alone. Two, don't take on too much. Rebbe Lezer Man Shach, who was one of the greatest of the Jewish leaders of the last 150 years, passed away in the early 2000s. I think he lived 106, 107. He was the Rosh Hashiva Panovich, the undisputed leader of the Haredi world of Israel. You know what he took on when he was 103 years old? This was his tenai for the coming year. I'm going to say Berchat Hamazon from a bencher, even though you know the whole thing by heart. And only for the first bracha. He didn't take on too much. Could he have done the whole Berchat Hamazon? Of course he could, in his sleep. Listen to the condition that he took on for himself for that year, that his New Year's resolution. This year, my resolution is to be a better person. I'm going to stop benching by heart. I'm going to use a sitter, but only for the first bracha. He didn't take on something that he felt he might not be able to do every day. So take on small little things. Too often we'll become inspired to change. Oh, I went to the Shema Shas. Okay, that's it. I'm going to do Shema Shas. Maybe you're not ready for that. Maybe you're not ready to do Gemara every day. So take on something else. Maybe take a page a week or instead of adaf, I'll do a side. You understand? Take on things that you can handle. Number three, daven. Even the greatest ambitions will fail without God's help. So if you take on a New Year's resolution, ask Hashem to help you fulfill that resolution. Pray to God and ask Him to help you on what you should be working on. And He should give you the focus and the wisdom so you should be able to do what you want to do. And four, very important, don't fear failure. So what? You fall. Get up again. Sheva pamim nafal tzaddik v'kam. I spoke about this tonight in a uh, shaloshim for my aunt. She was a great woman. And I, and I quoted Rav Yitzchak Kotner how he interpreted this pasuk in Mishle. It says, Sheva pamim nafal tzaddik v'kam. Seven times the tzaddik fell and he got up again. He says, the fools of the world explain it as seven times the tzaddik fell and got up again. That's not the way we explain it. You know how we explain it? Sheva pa'amim nafal tzaddik v'kam. Where do you put the comma? Seven times a regular person fell and then became a tzaddik because he got up. You understand? Most people think that, it, oh, he's born a tzaddik, he's born righteous. What do you want from me? I can't be like him. He's a great learner. He's a great person who does mitzvot all the time. He's a great Baal Chesed. No, 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 no. no. He didn't start that way because people think that's you have to be born. He worked at it and became that. And every one of us can do the same thing. Every one of us can start out as a regular person and become a tzaddik. How? By getting up after the fall. You fall, get up again. Don't be afraid of failure. Don't fear failure. The only way we can escape failure is by doing nothing. That's it. You don't want to fail? Don't do nothing. You won't succeed and you won't fail, but you all have not, nothing to show for yourself in this world. As we're in the month of Elul, the month of preparation before Rosh Hashanah, let's be smart and resolve to change. Again, let's review the four Ds. Number one, don't do it alone. D number two, don't take on too much. D number three, Davin. And D number four, don't be afraid of failure. Ramon Weinberg was one of the great men of the 20th century. He started a great institution called Eshat Torah. If you go to Israel 
and you visit the Western Wall, you'll see Esha Torah right there. Boom. Where many people stop in with cardboard kippahs and they walk out with beards and payas and tzitzis. It takes time. But, and then now he has, Baruch Hashem, he has branches all over the world. New York, South Africa, Miami, LA, Baruch Hashem. And he writes the following. A simple man, but pious, was a good guy, saw some soldiers coming back from a fierce war. And they were so happy because they were victorious. He says to them, you came home from a small war. Get ready for the big war. And what's that big war? That's the war inside you with your Yetzer Hara, your evil inclination. That's the biggest war. Not the war with the negotiations with, your, with the guy because you bought the building from him and you got a great price, or negotiations with your supplier, or negotiations with the customer. Those are small wars. The big one is the one that we fight inside ourselves. That's the war. So now we're beginning the Hebrew month of Elul. It's time to intensify the battle against the Yetzer Hara. And the first plan of attack is to knock out your sense of, of responsibility. The Yitzhara tries to make you feel, I, I can't do this, it's not for me. I'm not responsible. No. And you're going to say, okay, let my rabbi tell me what to do. Stop it! That's not his job. Your job is to sit down and you realize, if you talk too much Lashon Hara, that's what you're going to work on. If you like to run into McDonald's and have a little bit of a cheese burger, that's your problem, Kashrus. Sit down and think about where are you falling short. If you're waking up at 1 o'clock in the afternoon and you're missing to fill in, put it on. You can still do it till sunset. It kills me. How many people come to me? Rabbi, I don't rap. Why don't you rap? Why? It's such a simple mitzvah. Why not? It earns your olam haba. There's two things that qualify you to be Jewish. Your bris and tefillin. You take away one of them, you don't have testimony. In order to have valid testimony in Jewish court, how many witnesses do you need? Two. When you're not rapping, you put on tefillin, you now are knocking out the ability to be considered a Jew. Because every day you have to have aidut, testimony, that you're Jewish. And those two portions of testimony are your bris and the tefillin. Shabbos, we don't put on tefillin, but Shabbos itself is the other one that takes the place of tefillin. So we have your brit milah and your Shabbat. Very important. Stop for waiting for someone to tell you what to do in Elul. You're responsible for yourself. Take responsibility for yourself. Realize, where is it that you're falling short? If you're not sure, ask a friend. They'll tell you very quickly where you're short. Believe me. You have to become clear about what life means to you. Never has there been a time in the history of the world, now that we've been hit with this corona epidemic, that we realize that life is precious. Life is very, very valuable. What do you want to accomplish this year? What are you committed to? If you don't make these decisions, you're just going to coast through Rosh Hashanah and God's going to say, you know what? You didn't work on anything. Work on something. That's very important. Most importantly, examine your commitments to Torah learning and ask yourself, if, am I doing good in that department? The shofar is going to be blown. The enemy is at the gate. Now is the time to strengthen your resolve to fight the Yetzirah. It's time to take responsibility for your life, to reconnect to God's love, and to intensify your determination to learn Torah with purity.